Hey guys, Ron Donut here. Alright, I've got the uh, EKFC 680 GTX water block and about ready to um, install it on the, uh, the Gigabyte GTX 680 card that I have All right, here. Alright, about ready to uh, start the uh, removal of the uh, air cooling solution on the uh, Gigabyte Geoforce GTX 680. That's the version that I have so that I can install the uh, EKFC 680 GTX water block uh, on this guy. First things uh, that you need to do uh, are remove, in this case there's a couple of screws on the uh, IO bracket and then on the back of this card there are uh, all of the screws that are shown and actually on the back of a gigabyte card there are 18 according to instruction some of the other um, cards it could be upwards of a couple more 20 so there's 18 screws all throughout the back of this car. So you've got to remove those first um, in order to be able to remove the uh, air cooling uh, shroud. And uh, let me do that and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. One thing to note, guys, when you're doing this, that uh, check the back the screws which I did not do first on the back of the gigabyte card except for the four four larger screws uh, around the uh, GPU area all of these other small screws are all very tiny Torx, Torx head uh, screws now that you have the correct screwdriver the Torx bit driver for this card anyway now I'm going to remove the 18 screws off the back of this uh, of the uh, graphics card Okay, all the screws have been removed, and now I'm going to try and separate the cooler from the PCB. Let's see how that how that works. All right, there is a fan connector on this card. All right, and we have the um, thermal tape that's been applied to um, some of the memory and over the VRMs, and I'm going to remove that and clean that off. And then the next thing to do is to clean off the existing thermal paste that's on the uh, on the GPU right now. Okay, to get the thermal paste off the GPU, I uh, for something that's coated like that or removal. Uh, of a heat sink on a regular CPU. I use um, uh, alcohol, some 99% uh, <clears throat> pure alcohol um, in a rag to get the big stuff off and then I clean it up and prep it with some Arctic Clean and it's a two-step thing that it has. It's a thermal material remover really just to make sure I got any remnants of the uh, of the uh, thermal paste that's on there off and then a purifier. Now you probably you don't need to use these I just have been using them there. It's about nine bucks for the kit, and so uh, some Q-tips and uh, cleaner just to make sure that they're nice and clean and ready for the application of new thermal paste. All right, I got it cleaned off. Now it's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see this, but um, never seen a chip up close, personal. Let's see. It says here's a view of the card up close. See the Nvidia etched in there and the uh, chip GK104 just a closer look at the card the I.O. connector panel you got uh, some uh, memory chips right around there then your little uh, voltage uh, regulator modules bunch of caps All right, now I'm going to prep it, and then i got to cut some thermal pads. Some thermal pads to fit back over the memory and the VRMs. And then um, apply a thermal paste, and we're ready to put the uh, block on. 
Now for the uh, thermal pads, you get one long thin strip for the thermal pad material for the memory. It's different and so now you need to cut it up into uh, eight blocks for the memory. Okay, I've got the uh, the thermal tape all cut and um, ready to be uh, applied and uh, one of the things that I need to do now is put some thermal paste on the um, they say to put a little dab a little dab will do you on the VRMs just a little bit to improve the thermal transfer so on each one of these VRMs I'm going to put a little dab of the uh, thermal um, paste and I, I'm using Arctic Cooling uh, MX4 uh, so I'll put them on there and then uh, I will also put and they recommend in an X fashion so I'll put an X on the graphics chip and then um, once I do that I'll put the thermal pads over top and they'll be ready to put the water block on I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, show you as I apply it I need this a little bit too much on that one so I'll have some cleaning up to do the ones I put too much on Stuff is almost like uh, you know an ice cream comes out of its dispenser, the soft serve ice cream. Well, that's what this is like coming out of this tube. There's a little tail, so you got to learn how to deal with the tail when you apply it. So it doesn't go to the next or fall over, which it did on one of mine already. That's not too much, way too much. I guess that's a learned. So now I'm going to apply the uh, the tape to them, the thermal uh, tape or thermal pads, and uh, let me back it up a little bit for you. And you have to remove the tape that's on these guys here. So you got to take that off. and then the, the backing all right not easy to do Very small pieces okay this one goes up here all right that's one all right so I have them over the uh, the uh, thermal regulators uh, and it also asks you to cut a piece to put over these inductors and that's because it um, these inductors right here uh, or the coils are not um, I don't know that they generate heat but they say in order to prevent any uh, uh, potential uh, short circuiting um, with the uh, with the block so I'm going to put a piece over top of that but I'm not putting any um, thermal compound as it, it does not say to okay now that the uh, VRMs are done now I've got to put the thermal pads on the uh, memory chips and it does not say to put any thermal compound on them okay I have all the pads applied oh, wow. and then the next thing to do now is um, I'm going to clean the uh, the block I've touched it a number of times had my oily fingers on it and a nice um, available lint free um, material is a coffee filter so a coffee filter um, is what I use to get make sure everything's clean. I did wipe it down first with some um, alcohol, and then uh, I wiped it clean with the um, coffee filter, and uh, you get a nice and shiny, no dust, and 
and um, then I'll put the uh, thermal paste on the GPU and we'll get it on top and then the next step is to turn it over and start mounting some screws. Alright, I've got the uh, thermal paste on the processor now in an X the way they recommend it and uh, I'm about ready now to um, wipe it down the, um, the water block and I'll be putting it on top of the uh, card and then I gotta flip it over and then install the screws and since this is um, taller than the uh, original um, thickness of the card uh, I'm gonna I've got to rest it flip it over and rest it on I think the EK box so that uh, I have something flat to be able to put the uh, the card on while I screw it in so I can use two hands here we go Gonna be interesting. All right, looks like I can see all of the. Uh, I can see all of the uh, screws. Now each of these requires um, a washer and a Phillips head screwdriver from the EK kit, and it states to you do the one around the processor first so that's the one I'm doing here first that's these four okay there's some screws that are seem to be a little bit longer than others Okay, um, I did, uh, it does say to tighten them, put them on there, and then to take them off and check and see how, um, how it's been applied, and uh, I did do that because I noticed one of the uh, thermal pads I put on one of the memory, um, I, you can actually see in between here, was came out of place, so I had to take it off anyway and uh, readjust that, and then I put them back on, so... Uh, Everything seems to have stayed in place this time, and the thermal paste definitely spread um, quite a bit. I might have put a little bit too much on there, but uh, we'll see um, how the cooling does. And I have another card to do, so I have, now that I've learned on this one, see if I can do a little more sparingly, and we'll see if there's any difference in temps. And if I have to redo it, so be it. It's really not difficult. Um, I did a good job designing this. And uh, here is a uh, GTX 680 um, reference design with an EK FC 680 GTX water block. There we go, there's a GTX 680 with all of the pads applied and cut for the eight memory um, ICs. All the voltage regulator modules here and up here, and then uh, there are some. Uh, inductors coils right here that they just want you to put one on to prevent any potential shorting so uh, and then I have the thermal paste applied and that's the I uh, use the Arctic um, cooling MX4 and ready to mount it already finished one card here and this card had a little bit thicker tape for the memory um, I did use that uh, and then it had this uh, five millimeter um, um, thermal pad for the voltage regulators uh, modules so um, but it came out fine so uh, getting ready to mount the block on this one and we'll see how this one goes there we go block number two that one went together a little bit quicker of course I didn't uh, stop and film a uh, video a lot of it because I did it on that one but this one did go together a little bit smoother the um, 
the thermal tape is the same across all the pieces in this block. Um, still didn't really make a difference in assembly. So uh, that's it. Got okay, I'm uh, going to uh, put these uh, GTX 680s um, in um, SLI and using a parallel, the FC uh, bridge, parallel bridge from EK. And uh, in order to do that, I have to put on the links first on the uh, water block. So I'm going to do that. I've got to remove these three screws and then install some uh, O-rings here and then mount them onto uh, to the water blocks. So I'm going to do that uh, now. They give you um, they give you the tools um, with the bridge. Actually, they don't come with the links. The links, all you get are uh, you just get the links themselves in a bag with some O-rings. That's it. So you just get this and this in a um, EK GF 2XX bag. So now I'm going to go through and uh, install them and then get ready to hook up the uh, the bridge to it. Okay, we've got the um, the uh, links on, the EKFC links, and basically all you did was remove those three screws, as I said, put a couple of O-rings in the spots where the uh, uh, where the pass-through is for the uh, coolant, and then screw it back down. That's it. And so now we're going to connect up the uh, the bridge. So both cards have the uh, the links on them, and uh, got the O-rings here. Got the rest of the hardware. So uh, I'll show you what's involved in the uh, in the bridge. And since I'm using the uh, the bridge, and the bridge has uh, the inlets on its own, then I need to put plugs on um, on these guys right here. So I'm going to put plugs on them on both of these. And the bridge that sits atop it, and I'll show you, has the inlet uh, that feeds the system. Putting the uh, plugs in on the uh, on the water blocks. These are the plugs that came with the uh, the uh, the EKFC 680 GTX water blocks themselves. Okay, here is the uh, parallel block, the dual parallel block. So I'm um, going to use this as the inlet, and then this is going to be my outlet. So I've got to put some plugs on these other two. Okay, got the um, plugs in the uh, port. So the inlet, actually I measured it, so my out of my RAM block, it's going to be coming closer to this one. So it'll go in here, feed both graphics cards, and then they'll come out here, and then come back out and go back to the reservoir through that uh, outlet. All right now to put it on the cards. I'm securing the uh, parallel block to the uh, lower graphics card right now. It takes two M4 by 16 millimeter screws. the first block on and now securing the second one. The O-rings are in the grooves here. i tell you this uh, makes it feel pretty steady having them connected like this. Pretty solid. Nice and solid. Here we have a set of uh, GTX 680s in SLI using the uh, FC 680 GTX water blocks from EK. 
and the parallel uh, bridge system with a couple of uh, links. So again, it feels solid. That's uh, nice. We'll see. I'll have to put it in and do a leak check. And actually, I got to get it plumbed up. I got to get the tubing connecting from the ram blocks to here. So I've got to get uh, the fitting out that I'm going to use. And then I plan on connecting it, going back to the reservoir using a quick disconnect uh, here. So that's the plan. We'll see if that looks like that's going to do the job.